some of my favorite vlogs are often the ones where I genuinely just forget to talk to the camera simply because I'm having such a good time and living in the present and that was my time in Amsterdam. Our 72 hours in Amsterdam were the perfect amount of time, short but sweet, and if I could return to the city, I would in a heartbeat. It completely stole my heart and I'm so excited to share this vlog with you guys. Okay, let's get started, let's get started. Our trip began on a high coming straight off from our trip from Paris, which was just an amazing time. But we're eager for our next European adventure. And I already knew right as we walked out the train station that Amsterdam was going to be completely different. Right off the bat, Amsterdam's character and personality was so unique. And I could just tell that we were in for something completely different from Paris. First things first, first impressions, the rumors are more than true. There are more bikes than people in Amsterdam. And if there's more bikes than people, there are more people than cars because there were no cars on the streets. I decided, I basically forced Emma to take a Uber to our Airbnb just because I was so exhausted. Um, and even just calling the Uber and waiting for it was a journey because there were no cars on the road. Luckily, our Airbnb wasn't too far away, so we just went there, quickly refreshed ourselves, and was ready to go and just take on the city. Our Airbnb was in a prime location, first of all. We got a flat, it was like a ground floor apartment um, in Amsterdam West, and our Airbnb was about two blocks away from, I'm gonna put the word here just because I don't want to butcher the name, but it's basically nine streets of just boutiques, cafes, restaurants, fabulous shopping um so we really had a blast like i said in my paris vlog sometimes the best way to get to know a city is just to experience it firsthand and walk around um so that's exactly what we did on our first afternoon Airbnb we kind of got in around noon and it's 6 30 so we're just chilling we walked around a bit and we just need to get some food I'm, I feel delirious I feel out of it but we're here for three days we leave Friday afternoon and it's gonna be a good time the weather is really nice and I really hope it stays this way just sunny and relatively warm i think it was about like 18 degrees today but yeah i don't think we have specific things planned like we did for paris we booked tickets for museum tomorrow maybe we'll do another but hoping to do a canal tour and just eat a lot of good food we're walking around today there's a lot of um shops around our airbnb and i did not know what first of all I did not realize no one told me how nice the shopping was in Amsterdam. I'm kind of freaking out, like, concerned for my bank account, concerned for my mental. Like, every shop we've been going into, I've been falling in love with all the clothes. I've already bought two bags. I'll show you. Since, since you asked. Yeah. Later that night, we went to Food Hallen, which is an industrial style kind of dining hall. It was the best first meal because there were so many options, a bit overwhelming, but the food itself was so good. Um, Vietnamese food, Italian food, Japanese food, Dutch food, you name it. But such a cool place, like the vibe was incredible. There was such an energy, an electric energy in the air. And it was a Tuesday afternoon, it was rammed and just a very young crowd which was really nice and I think in general I came to realize that Amsterdam had a very young working crowd I don't know if it's maybe because of like the large English speaking population but tons of like remote workers and expats living in the city 
um, so it definitely could seem very appealing to work in. Food hauling in general really reminded me of the distillery district in Toronto, if you know it. And in general, like, Amsterdam had moments where I felt like I was in Montreal or Toronto. And I guess for that reason, that's also kind of why I felt at home. It felt very familial and just inviting. After a very, I won't say rigorously planned trip, but a, a fairly planned trip in Paris, our Amsterdam trip could not have been any different. We were really playing it by air and we hadn't booked many things in advance, really just the Rijksmuseum, um, which was our main objective of day two. That morning we went to Plouk, which was a cute, I think it's Plouk, which was a cute cafe, stopped there for breakfast and immediately headed off to Rijks. Honestly, I was blown away by Rijksmuseum. I don't know what I was expecting, but I guess coming from Paris and, you know, visiting the Louvre, which you kind of think of as the pinnacle of art, um, I was really blown away by Rijksmuseum and their collections. But I think the highlight for me definitely was Operation Night Watch, which is a very famous painting. It's almost 400 years old, I think. Um, but what was really cool is they had just redisplayed, if that's a word, redisplay, in March the painting because they were researching and restoring it for, if not a few months, like a few years, I'm not sure. But yeah, they had it behind a glass screen and it was like on springs that were able to measure the tension. It was just really cool to see how they were able to restore it and like fix any deformities and yeah, I don't know, it was, it was really cool. Afterwards, we kind of just walked around the city a bit more central, um, did some more window shopping. There are a bunch of like thrift and vintage shops in the area, so we're kind of just seeing if anything was calling to us. If there was one thing I was really bummed about not being able to go to, it was the Anne Frank House and the Van Gogh Museum. Growing up, Anne Frank's diary was one of the few books I actively like can recall and remember reading. So I really did want to visit the museum, but either way, um, tickets go on sale the month before the actual date, if that makes sense. So even though we're going in April, tickets went on sale the first Tuesday of March and we booked to go to Amsterdam after that. So either way, we wouldn't have been able to, but yeah, even just standing across the street from the historic house like, was a very moving and emotional moment for me and I'm so glad that we were able to do it. Later that night, I was so excited to be meeting up with my friend Vero. Vero and I went to McGill together and we lived two doors down from each other in Rez and she was actually one of the first people I met in Rez. I haven't seen everyone in so long from McGill and there are so many friends I didn't get to say goodbye to properly simply because of how COVID and just 2020 went down. Yeah, it was really nice to see someone from that chapter of my life and we were able to catch up on so many things and we had dinner at Soil Cafe, which is a vegan cafe not too far from our Airbnb. And it was just a great time. Like, I really missed her and it really felt like old times. We had a, <laughs> we had an incident at dinner. Um, <laughs> Pharaoh is allergic to peanuts. I wonder if she's gonna laugh if I put this in. <laughs> Do not say that. <laughs> We're okay. Here we are in Amsterdam. Pharaoh's having an allergic reaction. She's okay. But she's okay. How do I turn it around? Hold on. Let's see if I can 
<laughs> you know, time really does fly when you're having fun and I really couldn't believe that it was already our last day in the city. But we wanted to get through as much as possible and really just use up all our time. So yeah, our first objective of the day was, I'm, I'm already laughing, was to go to the University of Amsterdam, which Miguel, Miguel was like this. We had two campuses. Amsterdam has four campuses. So the campus that we wanted to tour was literally across the street from the bus. We boarded to go to the campus we thought we were going to. So we actually went to the science campus, which was a bit more eastern in the city which really was a waste of time but looking back i really enjoyed doing it because we saw a part of the city that we wouldn't have seen otherwise and in general it was such a like lush green space we eventually made our way back into the city center saw the campus we wanted to see then we just walked around central area um walked through the red light district which wasn't really anything considering it was like the middle of the afternoon but we saw it we can say that we saw it Chuck off for the thing. What is? Oh my god! No foreign is an experience, y'all. Okay. No. <laughs> um, I don't like filming stuff in front of Emma, but here we are. I'm talking to my camera. So it goes. Okay. Hello. So it's the last day in Amsterdam today. What did we do? Kind of just ticked off a lot of the stuff that we wanted to do, like getting waffles. Um, we're going to do a canal tour in about 15 minutes we have to leave um but yeah it's been a really nice trip yeah i've really been enjoying myself i feel like this is a really nice city at times it reminds me a lot of toronto um but yeah i don't know i really wish i had another day i feel like it wasn't even three days it was really two and a half but it's a really nice city i really do love it here Flagship was the best company we could have ever done this with. They were so hilarious. Just an engaging tour taught us these niche facts about the city and like the architecture and the history that we would have never have known previously. And one of the hosts was even from the ABC Islands. I think she was from Aruba or Curacao, one of them. So we're able to connect with her and kind of have a conversation. But it was just an incredible tour and I would 100% recommend it if you're looking for a canal tour in Amsterdam. To round off our final day and just our trip in general, we met up with one of Emma's friends for dinner that night at Bordeaux. An amazing vibe, cool ambiance, and amazing food. They had castangels. Which are these Dutch Indonesian bar snacks. Listen, I love things that are not good for me. It basically is like a cheese stick wrapped in spring roll paper. I haven't stopped thinking about it since, first of all, so I'm going to definitely try and recreate it, but overall, a perfect meal, fantastic final meal to just conclude the perfect trip. Everything you need to know, the ins and outs of Amsterdam, the more detailed itinerary will be available on my blog. The blog post is live now, the link is in my bio. But yeah, I wanted to really thank you guys for all the love on this series so far. I've really enjoyed making it, so yeah. Thank you so much for the love. The next time I'll see you, it'll be in a few weeks with the finale of this trip in London. Oh.